Ichthyosaurs were dolphin-like reptiles from the Mesozoic, and during their heyday during the Jurassic, you had things like Ophthalmosaurus, which would have been around 12 feet long or 4 meters, and it had large eyes so that it could go deep into the oceans and catch squid and fish. But many of the earliest ichthyosaurs from the Triassic are actually more convergent on a different group, specifically the whales, and technically dolphins are whales, but that's a whole separate taxonomy thing. Regardless, for this right now, what you need to understand is animals like Shostosaurus were very, very large ichthyosaurs, and some had teeth, some didn't, and now there's a new fossil of one that may have been the largest one yet. Ichthyotitan severinensis is this new specimen, and it's known from two separate syringular bones, one of which was found and identified after the first one was found and described a few years ago. This one's slightly more complete and, more importantly, larger, and it's still partial. That's the thing that you need to understand is this bone, which at least the parts of it we have is over a meter in length, would have been potentially two meters in length. The syringular bone is part of the jaw and the back of the skull, and so that helps us understand how large its skull would have been and potentially how large the entire animal would have been. At two meters, it would have been even taller than I am, and I am exactly average height for an American male. So pretty big bone for, again, just one singular bone that's already bigger than I am. So when we apply that to the rest of the skull and then the rest of the body, it produces estimates that are likely suggesting this organism could have been over 25 meters or over 80 feet long, which is absolutely the largest known ichthyosaur. It also comes from the very, very late Triassic, which is interesting because again, we mostly only get these large ichthyosaurs during the Triassic and then seemingly they died out during the end Triassic extinction when the oceans underwent a ton of change. The fossil comes from the Triassic Westbury Mudstone Formation near Lillestock, England. And this is interesting because at this time, as Europe was starting to break apart from the rest of the continents, which had previously been in Pangaea, large parts of Europe became a shallow sea and an archipelago. So while this animal did go extinct, this kind of helps to suggest that those changes in the ocean were part of the cause, and then those shallow oceans allowed for many other forms like Ophthalmosaurus to start becoming more successful. That said, there's still other very interesting things to look at with this, because it's not just the bones of this animal, there's also some fossils of other organisms right around it. Specifically, there's a few clams that have attached, which suggests that this animal died, the bones became disarticulated, again, we only have the syringulars, not any other bones from it, and then these clams found a hard surface and went, hey, we can attach here and filter feed, and that's what they did until the bone got more buried. There's also some scratches on the bone, which indicate it was probably being scavenged on. And there's a number of groups that could have done this. Obviously, sharks are one of the first things that come to mind, but it could have even been some of the smaller ichthyosaurs. For example, Guaiju ichthyosaurus, which lived earlier than ichthyotitan, but would have been about 5 meters long or around 15 feet, was found to eat large prey. One fossil of it we actually have, it choked on its prey, which was a very large, similarly sized, at about 10 feet long, reptile that also lived in the waters, specifically a thalatosaur. And so that kind of just leaves a single question up. Was it filter feeding? Was it like the large mysticete whales of today? Things like humpback whales, where it could have been a similar size and also just filter feeding. Meanwhile, you also have things like sperm whales, which were very clearly predatory and still have teeth. So potentially if we have more of the fossil found eventually, we can say something about its potential diet and then its behavior as well. But for now, it's just the largest known ichthyosaur. And again, absolutely massive and showing that very rapid changes can occur in certain groups if the conditions are right following an extinction event. 